Welcome guys, my name is Shabir and today we'll talk about parse and try parse in C sharp. We'll begin by looking at the theoretical definition between what a par what parse is and what try parse is, and then I'll follow that up with a coding example so you can see what happens behind the screen. So if we look at the difference, uh, the theoretical difference between parse and try parse, um, parse, what it does, it's a method that is in the class of whether it's an int, uh, int, double, decimal, float. The job of this method is to take a string re representation of a number and convert that to an integer. So if you are inside the, if you're trying to convert a whole number, you will do something like int dot parse and give it a string. If you are doing a double, then you will do double dot parse. Uh, uh, but the difference, uh, the, the main problem with this method is that it can throw an exception. So it assumes that uh, whatever data you're putting in to your fields, all right, whatever data you're passing to it will be 100% correct. So if, for instance, I'm trying to convert an, uh, an integer to a text to an integer and I write uh, a 4.5, uh, it will convert that. That's fine. But if I write 4.5 ABC, it will crash because it cannot convert ABC. Now, this is where triparse comes in. Triparse does exactly the same thing as what parse is doing. It converts a string representation of a number to an integer, but the, the, the advantage with triparse is that if it fails, if it cannot convert the number to uh, the, the, sorry, the string representation to a number, it is not going to throw an exception. It is, the program is going to continue. So let's look at an example, a real life uh, coding example. So here we're saying that a car consumes 7.9 liter of gas per 100 kilometers while driving in city and 5.9 when driving on the highway. Uh, and you are asked to develop an application that will uh, con that will calculate the total consumption of, of gas uh, driven on in on the highway and in the city. Uh, and we will store that inside of uh, text box called txt total fuel. So let me show you what I s will first look at the uh, parse version and then we'll look at the try parse. So here I have a text box called txt city kilometers. I uh, the other one called txt highway kilometer and the answer will be stored in txt total fuel. And when I click on this button calculate, it is going to take this the the city kilometer. Uh, uh, and the highway kilometer calculate that based on the rule that we have given over here 7.9 liter in uh, in the city and 5.9 liter per 100 kilometers on the highway based on the, that rule it is going to determine what was the total consumption of gas so let's look at the parse uh, version first so uh, as you know that city kilometer kilometers can be uh, in decimal points so we'll use double here we'll also use double over here for the highway kilometer so I have I declare a variable called uh, double city km and then I will write double dot and then it when I write parse, as you can see over here, it says converts the string representation of a number to its double precision. So it is expecting a string over here. And this is where we are going to pass txt city kilometer. And we want to read from the text property of this. So what this is going to do is it's going to take whatever is stored inside txt city kilometer convert that to a double and store the uh, answer in uh, city kilometer now next we'll do highway kilometer dot parse and then we want the highway kilometers dot text 
now that we have uh, stored both and both uh, values in CDKM and Highway Cam, we're going to uh, calculate the total of it. So I'm going to declare another variable uh, called total. And for city kilometers, we're going to do city kilometers, and we set 7.9 liter per 100 kilometers. And for the highway, we want 5.9. divided by a hundred this will do the whole job and finally we're going to put the whole answer back into so let's run this Okay, I'm gonna put a hundred here, one hundred here. Calculate. There you go. So it is doing the job it's, it, it, that it is supposed to do. But now, if I put instead of a hundred, I put letters over here. You see, it is going. It is crashing over here because uh, we instead of giving it a hundred, it was expecting uh, a number, and we gave it a number along with text. So the parse will not work over here. We need to use try parse because we uh, we were assuming that our users are going to enter perfect data. The user is not always going to enter perfect data, so that's why we're going to use try parse over here. So let's look at the try parse version. So the try parse version will be the same thing, except we write this. We initialize our initial variable to zero. Double dot parse. Dot try parse. Sorry. Dot try parse. It takes in a string. As you can see, if you hover over this uh, try parse over here, it says that it is expecting a string as an input, and it will uh, output the result over there. So. If it is able to convert this, then we want the answer to be stored inside CD kilometer. Okay, all this is saying that take the num take the text that is written over here in CD km. If you're able to convert it to a double, then store the answer inside this variable that called CD km that we initialized to zero. If you're not able to convert it, then leave it as it is, meaning leave leave it at zero. And we'll do the same thing with the other one. There you go. The keyword over here is out. What out means is that put the e, put the out put the result. Uh, store the result in this variable over here. So if I initialize this to 10, okay, it will leave it at 10 if it's not able to convert it. If I leave it, put that 100, if it fails, it will leave it at 100. But uh, we want to leave it at zero over here. Now, um, if you are using try parse and you're, prog you're, assume, you're expecting that the user will enter good data, then uh, and you're using try parse, then you have to do some validation with if statements. But in our case, we are assume we we don't we are not going to look at if statements yet. There will be another video about that. Um, so let's run this program and see what it's actually doing in the background. Here I'm going to enter a hundred. Hundred again. So it's doing the job. And now if I enter some letters over here, you see. It did not convert it. If I put a breakpoint in my program over here, you 
and I click calculate, you see this one is at zero. This one is at still at zero. This one right now is at a hundred because it was able to convert it. And this one it was not able to convert, so it left it at zero. If I had put 10 over here, it will put it will leave it at 10. If I had put 100 over here, it will leave it at 100. So it will take the default value over here. And because this was set at 0, anything uh, times 0 is 0. So that's why it was only able to do the calculation of CDKM times 7.9 divided by 100. And this guy over here was 0. So... And our final answer is 7.9. So that was all for the. So if we if we go back and look at the difference between parse and triparse, they both do exactly the same thing. Uh, the only difference is that a parse we are assuming perfect data, and our program can crash if the user does not enter perfect data. Triparse, uh, we do not assume the user is going to enter perfect data. That's why we have to uh, do some validation on the back end if needed. Uh, that was all for parse and triparse. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below and I will get to it as soon as I promise. Thank you very much.